Okay, so that's, uh, that's the outline. Um, just to answer some theory questions on the resource case, and then the key outcomes of that, and then uh, I'll cover Zambia's experience and whether uh, Zambia is out of the woods. Yeah, a resource case, as my colleagues have said, it really refers to, to countries with abundant natural resources, and the tendency for these countries not to grow as fast as, as, um, as their potential. Uh, it's mainly, you know, concentrated in a country with a high concentration of minerals and fossil fuels. In a, in a number of cases, the, the resource case you know, happens to be positive in terms of contributing to, to development, but in most cases it's negative. Yeah, what are the key outcomes for resource case? Um, the, the, main, the main thing, that especially in, in, in the context of today's discussion, is the revenue uh, volatility. When a country dep depends so much on uh, natural resources, their fiscal status is, is very volatile. In, in terms of plenty, they, they, they have uh, high, 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 higher resources. In, term, in, in, in terms of difficulty, the, um, the revenue collapses. And if there are no alternatives in terms of other sectors to replenish what is being lost, you, know, you find that there is a um, tendency for countries to go into high levels of uh, uh, borrowing and debt financing. The, the, the other issue is um, governance and corruption. When you have a high concentration of uh, re, you know, resources in one sector, there's a tendency for, for rent seeking. You know, a, a, a lot of countries are going into, into that problem. The, the, there's also the issue of Dutch disease, where um, there's a high appreciation of the exchange rate, which, which damages other sectors, especially manufacturing and agriculture. And also the, the distorted prices fail uh, um, uh, capital flight. The, 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 the other important aspect, especially for Zambia, is the excessive debt which a resource case can impose. You know, revenues, um, you know, um, resource, resources act as collateral for, for loan pushing. A, a, a lot of uh, financiers will come to you to say, look, we have got copper, you have got oil, you, you, you can borrow, there's nothing wrong, you, you are going to pay. But you know, the, the revenues may not, may, may not be guaranteed. And also, when a country falls into this uh, type of trap, you know, the credit downgrades, you know, cause you know, caused by defaults, reduces access to new capital by countries. The, the, other, the other issue, of course, is wars and conflict, you know, armed, armed conflict you know, over resources, uh, fights over jurisdiction, and, uh, and, and conflict may also affect other sectors, and it can also affect uh, food security, as, you, as with conflict, you cannot have a, a, a productive agriculture. Now, the, 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 these are the few points that I wanted to put up in terms of theory. Now, let me, let me come straight away to Zambia's experience. The, um, Zambia had a strong start. The, 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 the resource case in the initial at least 10 years was, was, was very positive. Um, people say Zambia was born with a copper spoon. Mining, mining taxes and, 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 um, and surpluses plus some donor support from the World Bank and other bilaterals caused, you know, built a very strong economy in the first, in the first 10 years. This guaranteed the middle income status for, for, for most of the population. You know, Zambia also supported a large, you know, import substitution strategy, you know, which in, in which they invested in, in, in a large network of prostitutes. You know, there they, they were firms for everything, which delivered uh, bread and motor vehicles, you know. But this didn't last. You know, as, as, uh, as expected, the, the challenges started, especially after mid-1975. The, 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 the other um, issue with um, Zambia's case was that, you know, there was a high concentration of investment in a few sectors, mainly targeting the mines, to the neglect of uh, other, other sectors in terms of, you know, putting up new infrastructure for, for agriculture, for example. You know, there wasn't much investment in feeder roads, downs for irrigation, because most of the financing was going towards the mines. This also included the capacity, in terms of human capacity, a lot of training for the mines, but very little for the other sectors. Of course, that disease, we have talked about it. You know, there's a, there, there was a high appreciation of the currency. 
the in initial ex um, ex expansion of um, a, a very dependent import subsistence sector, which could not be sustained when uh, when revenues collapsed. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the oil bombs also suppressed, uh, you know, and distorted uh, exports from other sectors. But also there, there, there was this massive urbanization. You know, a, a lot of people left the, 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 urban, the urban areas because, of course, the, the copper belt where the mining was, all, all the jobs were there, and all the subsidized food was there, so nobody was left to, to, to mine. I, I, my, 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 my own parents, for example, moved from a, a rural area to, to the urban areas when, when they were very young, and, and it, was, it was common for everybody to do that. The, 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 the elephant in the room for Zambia, of course, is the excessive debt. You know, when, uh, after the, the, the first boom, we had the global recession in the mid 70s when incomes fell sharply, and, and there, were, there were little alternatives as sources of, of income for the country. The country did not adjust, it built up large debt out of um, borrowing to sustain spending. You know, Zambia was lucky that, you know, in, in 2005, they received, uh, you know, hippie debt, debt relief. But now, the, the space which, which was created was quickly swallowed by new debt in the, in the, in the 2010s and, 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 and going forward. You know, the, the, this was because of the expectations of uh, high revenues with the new investors in the mines. You know, there they were, they were large projections of revenues and also the, the private sector uh, you know, lenders came in to say, look, we can give you euro bonds, you can pay, there's no problem. You know, and you know, this is what, 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 what led to the excessive debt. There were also some governance issues. The, the mines were very powerful. They, they, they influenced the government decisions, strong lobbies by both firms and the mining unions were, were, were very strong. And um, the, the, the regulation and environmental measures were not rigorously enforced. You know, Zambia has a lot of problems with the, with environmental degradation. So some of the companies from the West are still in court in terms of the damage to, to rivers and other things. So that, that was also a part of the resource case. Now, in, in terms of theory, what measures can a country you know, implement to, to kind of you know, subvert the, the, the resource case? In, in terms of macro, ma, ma, macroeconomics, you can adopt flexible exchange rates to, to avoid the uh, overvaluation of currencies manage the inflows of boom revenues by establishing sovereign, um, sovereign funds, which can be built up during the years of the boom and, and you know, utilized during the, the lean periods. You can also increase the domestic savings with, in, with incentives uh, as domestic, for domestic mobilization, but then also cut the deficit by the government. The, the final thing really here is that, you know, we should cut the debt using the three R's, restructure, um, uh, reschedule and reduce. Yeah, yesterday when I was at the airport, I thought of another one, you know, the, you know, the reform. So there are now four hours. And then uh, taxation and investment, the, um, the, the, the need to tax extractive sectors adequately, you know, for the sake of the future generations. Because my, 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 my mining uh, resources are they are, they are not infinite, they, 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 they come to an end. So, it was, so when you are extracting, there should be enough taxation to, to, you know, to save for future generations. So this is also of, of, of smoothing consumption. And you know, um, they should increase investment in education and other sectors so that you know, competitiveness of other sectors can, can grow uh, away from mining. On, on, on governance, it's, it's important to have a strong rule of law, strengthening anti-corruption measures, strengthening monitoring of human rights, and also increase, you know, monitoring of all levels of government and, and, the, and, and civil service for security. It's also important to, to give populations in, in, in extractive areas voice, you know, and, 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 and the power to defend themselves, to say, look, if a, if, if a mining project is, is good for them, they say no. If it's not good for them, they say no. And, you know, I mean, I mean, they say yes. And then if it's not good for them, they say no. So this is one of the, one of the measures. So is Zambia out of the woods yet? Well, mining still dominates the, um, the, the economy. 
the, we, we put up a graph here to show the, the, how copper has, has performed. Copper is really an, an, an index for, for mining in Zambia, but there are other minerals, other new minerals which are also, you know, coming up, being uh, developed, including man manganese, nickel, and, you know, recently we are, we, we are having a, a gold, and there's a, there, there, there's a gold rush in several parts of the country. But you see that mining still accounts for around 40% of, um, of, of, of total revenues, you know, for, for, for the country. And uh, it constitutes 80% of total exports. And also, um, the, 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 the linkages to other sectors and violation continues to be low. Uh, there have been recent discoveries of gold and other minerals. And also, the new investment is still targeting some areas in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the northwest. We, we, we look at what, what has happened to agriculture in terms of this. You know, the, the, the area macro sector reforms increased output and exports. Uh, but, but, but of course, uh, the debt relief was also quite useful in, in achieving that. You know, agriculture has expanded significantly in, in, in the last 10, 15 years, but you know, the share of, of GDP has continued to decline, mainly out of uh, the, the growth of um, services, mining and, you know, and uh, some manufacturing. Yeah, there are, are also new mineral discoveries which continue to, to, uh, to deplete resources from agriculture. And um, I, I, I mentioned God already in, in, in that context. And um, with, the, with the new minerals, actually, most, most of which are precious metals, there's a potential conflict for, from uh, mining, which is not too regulated, you know, and the legal mining operations. So to answer your question, whether Zambia is out of the woods, we can say progress has made, yes, but, but Zambia is not yet out of the woods. Thank you.